Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to talk to you about choosing the right E3D configuration for your 3D printer. While there are many hot ends, extruders, and nozzles out there, E3D still remains as one of the top tier upgrades. However, there are a huge number of different parts that E3D has, which means it can get a little overwhelming trying to decide which parts are right for your printer. So I'm going to go into a little bit of a view of each of the different parts, how they might work best for some people and not others, but if you want a more detailed guide on all these different parts, feel free to read our article down below. So with that said, let's get started. Before you get started, you do need to know whether or not you have a 12 volt printer or a 24 volt. So if you have a 12 volt, you're not going to just put a 24 volt heater cartridge in there to make it heat up faster because it doesn't exactly work like that. You need to make sure that all the components that you get match the voltage of your printer. So make sure to read either the technical specifications that came with the printer, go check online, ask us in the comments, whatever it takes to figure out whether you have a 12 volt or a 24 volt printer. So now that you know your voltage, you need to figure out if you want air cooled or water cooled. Now the only difference between the two is that with air cooled, you're usually printing not in an enclosure. Because in an enclosure, if you have a fan, it's just gonna be pumping hot air onto the heat sink and you want it to be cooler ambient air. So it's not really doing much help in cooling down your heat sink. So if you are using an enclosure, you're gonna want a water cooled or liquid cooled system. And for that, they have things like the Titan Aqua, the liquid cooled Chimera or Cyclops. There's also the Kraken. But deciding if you're going with an enclosure or not may make the difference in whether you want an air cooled or a water cooled system. If you decide to go with direct drive, you have a couple different options. You can get a Titan extruder with an E3D V6 hot end underneath it. So you do get the three to one gear ratio of the extruder, which means you have more torque that you can put on your filament. And it has the constrained filament path, which means that you can print flexibles a lot easier. However, if you want a more compact extruder, you can get the Titan Arrow. So instead of having the heat sink underneath as the standard V6, it's a different orientation where it moves it higher up. So you gain a bit of Z height, about 35 millimeters, although you are sacrificing a little bit of X because the heat sink does come out further and you have the heat sink fan to keep it cool. However, you can also go with the Titan Aqua. So rather than having a fan, it has water cooling that is moved out of the system. So you can print in enclosures a lot easier and it works as a great heat sink for the motor as well. Now, if you'd rather not have the weight of a motor, like in a direct drive system, you can opt for Bowden, where you have the whole motor move to the frame of the printer and then saving all of that weight in the print head so you can move it faster. In that case, the Titan extruder also works as a Bowden extruder. You just have to get the groove mount that goes into it so that it can fit the PTFE tube that connects the extruder and the hot end. And for the hot end, you can either go with a V6, so you can do all metal, it means you can print up to about 300 degrees Celsius, or you can go with the V6 Lite, which is PTFE lined. It's a little cheaper and you are limited to only about 245 degrees Celsius. E3D also offers a variety of nozzles and material upgrades so you can print faster, print stronger, print abrasive materials without breaking any of your different 3D printers parts. From there, you'll need to decide if you want a single extruder or a multiple extruder. Now, if you're going with a multiple extruder, the first of which is a Chimera. So what that does is it takes one heat sink and mounts two heater blocks below it, which means not only can you print with two different colors, but you can print with two different materials since each has its own independent thermistor and heat zone. That being said, because there are two different nozzles, they have to be calibrated at the exact same height. And I mean exact, because if they're not, you can get some oozing between the two. So if you have white and red loaded, you may get some red blobs in your white part and some white blobs in your red part. So you need to do quite a bit of calibration to make sure that it doesn't ooze as much when you're printing or just print with one at a time. It does take some time to calibrate it to make it right. Also, if you want to do direct drive, it can get a little awkward just with how the feed paths are. Usually you have to come up with some weird combination of not totally direct, but close enough. So in the Chimera's case, it's best served just being Bowden. Your next option for multiple extruders is the Cyclops. So rather than having two heater blocks and two nozzles, you have one heater block with one nozzle and a nozzle that's specially designed to have two feed paths go into it to then mix the filament that goes in. Now because of that, you can't do two different materials, but you can do two different colors. And you don't get any sort of oozing when you do a layer change or a filament change because it's one nozzle. It's not gonna ooze because it's remaining idle. It's constantly in use. 
That being said, you do have some uh, waste in the form of a purge block because if you're printing white and red again, to move from red to white without having it be pink, you need to print a lot of a waste block, just a layer back and forth over here in the corner that you will just throw away. So you do have a little bit of waste with the Cyclops, and on top of that, it is that special nozzle, so you won't be able to use your standard setup of E3D nozzles with the Cyclops. Your final option is the Kraken, which is the end-all be-all for E3D multiple extruders. Now it is only water-cooled just because you have four separate heater blocks, which means four different materials. However, all four heater blocks have to be perfectly calibrated to the same layer height and to the same exact offset so that you don't get any oozing or smearing between all the different nozzles. So it is difficult to calibrate and because of its size, you are limited to only a Bowden system. There's no way to fit four direct drive extruders on top of this. It has to be Bowden. Now, of course, multiple extruders isn't for everyone. You may not either need it, you may not want it, you don't need multiple colors because you're gonna paint it anyways. In which case, a single extruder will do just fine. For your heat break, which is the part that connects your heater block to the heat sink and helps prevent heat from moving between the two, you have the standard, which is stainless steel, or you have the upgrade, which is titanium. And titanium has a lower thermal coefficient, which just means that heat doesn't want to travel through it as readily as stainless steel, which means that your hot end stays hot and the cool end stays cold. For your heater block, the standard is aluminum, which heats up pretty well, but starts melting at a pretty low temperature, so you can't print very hot with it. So your upgrade is a plated copper heater block which is more thermally conductive, so it heats up quicker and it heats up to a lot higher temperature because it has a higher melting point than aluminum, which means you can print about 500 Celsius at the max. And because of that temperature, you can't use a silicone sock. So instead, they've opted to go with a non-stick coating on this heater block. For your thermistor, there are a couple different options. There's the older style bead, which is a small glass bead and some very fragile wires. It was a real big hassle to try and get those to work right and not break anything. So instead they have the newer thermistor cartridge system. So you just slide it into your heater block, tighten it with a set screw, and using the quick disconnect feature, you can just connect the wires and start printing. So if you ever break anything, you wanna maintain your printer, upgrade some parts, you just take it out, disconnect it, put in the new parts, it's that easy. You do also have the PT100, which registers temperatures a little differently than a thermistor, so you will need an amplifier board between everything and your 3D printer's actual motherboard, but it can go up to 400 degrees Celsius. For heater cartridges, there aren't many options. You either have 30 watt, which can heat up to a pretty normal temperature of about 300 Celsius, just not do it too quickly. So instead you can opt for the 40 watt heater cartridge, which can heat up faster and also heat up to a much higher temperature. So if you're trying to print high temperature materials, you're gonna need a 40 watt. They do also have the high precision 30 watt, which does have a quick disconnect feature on it. So you can just disconnect it, put in a different heater cartridge and reconnect it if you ever want to upgrade. And finally, you have the Volcano heater block system. So instead of the normal V6, which is a pretty flat heater block, it turns it so you can put the heater cartridge in long ways, so it can heat up the entire block a lot hotter. And because of this, the nozzle itself is a lot longer too. So it gets a longer melt zone, which means your filaments will go in and have more time to heat up. So you could print something at a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and print pretty fast, or print a 1.2 millimeter nozzle print slower, but be able to have those big, chunky layer lines, which does also mean you will have stronger parts with it. And of course, like any other E3D product, there are a huge variety of different nozzles, from 0.4 up to 1.2 nozzle sizes. You have different materials for abrasiveness, for faster printing. You've got the Olsen Ruby Volcano nozzles, so you can print abrasive materials really fast, really thick as well. It, there's just a whole other variety of options with the E3D Volcano nozzles. And that about covers it. So like I said in the beginning, there's just too many options to go fully in depth with each of them, but hopefully I've said enough here to give you an idea of which E3D upgrade you want to put on your 3D printer. Now I'm gonna be hanging out in the comments down below, so if you'd like to discuss anything like E3D upgrades, your favorite nozzle, what you might want for your 3D printer, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I'll be posting. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.